Hey, yo, what up, y'all? Tight shirt, Ted Warfield. I hope you're having a great day so far. If this is your first time here, you're a fat ass welcome to you. And if you're part of the fam, you're part of the squad, and you came back, hey, welcome back. I'm so happy to see your face. Make sure you drop a hashtag fam down below so I know you came back. And also, I need y'all to do me a favor. Drop your like number down below in the comments also, okay? What am I doing out here? Well, it's about 80 degrees. I'm sorry I ain't in the freshness of attire. Can't look cute all the time. And I'm out here at my stepson's football game, and I brought the ZV E10 with me. Now, Sony announced this about, well, a week or two ago, and there has been a lot of feedback, some good, some bad, and I've had this bad boy for about 45 days, and you know, I got some opinions and things I want to say also. So. Real quick before we get started, if you want a chance to win one of these, your boy Terry Warfield is one of the North American judges for the Sony Vlog Challenge, so I'll link that up there in the description. The second thing, I did make a video, here come the bugs, I'm, I'm getting bit up. I did make a video comparing the ZV-1 to the ZV-E10 because they're about the same price and I know a lot of people want to know which one of these cameras should you buy. So that's down below, I'll also link it right up there. And lastly, yo, the stabilization in this camera is electronic only. You need to watch that before you make a decision if you want to buy this camera because the results are quite interesting. But anyways, we're going to talk about almost fail. We're going to talk about some of the things that people have been saying and ultimately my overall thoughts after using this about a month, give or take. So y'all ready to get into it? I'm ready. Let's do it. So let me just throw this out there. You know, I was paid by Sony to do the Sony vlog challenge, right? But that don't mean that my opinions are not mine. That don't mean that I'm not about to bomb Sony for things I think is wrong with this camera. Because as you will see, I'm going to give them these buckets where I think they need the buckets at. But I do really like this camera. I ain't going to lie. Now, what is it? It's like an A6100 and the ZV-1 had a baby, right? It's nothing necessarily new about this camera. It is more so like a culmination of some of Sony's old technology plus Sony's new technology all masked into a small body tailored for people who want to make video content. Now some of y'all might argue that yo nobody asked for this camera and etc and actually even though some of y'all might think like oh Sony's just trying to get rid of old parts and stuff like that there was market research and data and there's actually a market a large group of people who wanted a camera like this which is where it came from so for people who aren't familiar with sony yo this is sony's vlog offering one of two now the first one is the zv1 which again i'll link that video right up there that one's more like a point and shoot pull it out bam wham thank you ma'am get my shots and i'm out this is a little bit more advanced so with this one you got all of the latest vlog features so like face tracking 4k 24 4k 30 um which is down sample from 6k 1080p 120 frames per second uh a changeable lens mount which is super huge if you want to put on different lenses for different looks and stuff like that super good autofocus decent battery life flippy screen great built-in microphones picture profile so like hlg s log 3 all that good stuff all of that stuff is messed into one tiny little package for $6.99 now I'm gonna be saying the price a few times because some of y'all are really thinking that this camera is supposed to be Sony's latest and greatest y'all expecting this to be an a7s3 and a $700 body you ain't gonna get that right this is Sony's existing stuff just packaged it to a different body specifically made for vloggers and the content creators who don't want to lug around a bigger setup or just looking for a B camera or a live streaming camera that types of things so let's talk about the things that i really like about this camera number one is the image quality that was one of my biggest things with the zv1 was the image quality was cool but it wasn't like that image quality i was looking for with the aps-c sensor in here you do benefit from better dynamic range better low light performance and super crispy image quality and you can put different lenses on here to get that cinematic look that blurry background and all that stuff so i do like the sensor in here now Honestly, it's the same one that Sony been putting in every 6000 series camera for the last umpteen years. It is really starting to show its age, to be honest. Although it is still a good sensor, it has one major problem, and that is rolling shutter. And I'm going to say that again. The sensor in the ZV-E10 has one big problem problem and that is the rolling shutter we can deal with the 8-bit footage which you know some people might argue oh we should got 10-bit stuff like that remember budget camera budget price point but the rolling shutter in this camera is by today's standards it's pretty bad you know it's not a big deal when you film in the 1080p because 
it's not a whole lot of processing power involved but when you switch over to 4k the sensor readout is too slow and anytime that you jerk the camera left or right or anytime that something flies past the camera and it's moving fast you will see it's like a jello pattern and it doesn't look good it's not pleasing at all so that is something to consider if you want this camera to roll and shutter performance is pretty bad uh, but aside from that it's sony's typical sensor that they put in all their aps-c cameras and you know image quality wise pictures are dope video is dope image quality is dope as long as you understand its limitations the battery life is you know it's so so 6000 series cameras ain't never really been all that when it comes to battery life what i really love about it though is we got all of the improvements from the zv1 so we got all of the features like the background defocus the product showcase mode we also got the face waiting and what that means is when you're vlogging the camera is trying to keep your face as evenly lit as possible so it'll change everything else around you but your face will stay consistently lit i love the built-in microphones they are passable they're not the best but they're better than typical point and shoot and small camera microphones that have them built in the good thing with this camera though is you got a headphone jack and you got a microphone jack and it's got the multi-interface shoe so you can use sony's accessories like you know all them fancy microphones and stuff like that it is USB-C and that's perfect for people that want to charge but secondly that means you can plug this bad boy up to the computer with USB-C cable and you can live stream with no additional software needed plus it'll keep the camera charged at the same time now the ZV-1 did it too but that used the micro USB and don't nobody use that crap no more so I'm happy to see USB-C in the Sony ZEV-10 overall it's a really good solid package although not anything necessarily new the configuration is new and honestly i don't see any reason to buy a 6100 over this camera right here because this has everything the 6100 has minus the evf but it's got all the other improvements and they're basically the same price i even asked sony like in the initial product launch like aren't y'all scared that this might cannibalize the 6100 sales and they was like yeah pretty much we know nobody's gonna buy one now why shouldn't you buy this camera? Let's talk about that next. Let's do it. Alright y'all, I'm kind of losing my voice, but before we move forward, if you like this video so far, do me a favor, hit that freaking thumbs up button. You do not understand how important that thumbs up button is. For y'all haters, you can go ahead and hit that dislike button two times. And if you're not part of the fam, you're not part of the squad, now would be a great time to go ahead and join the family. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so that you get notified when new videos go up. Now, let's get on to the things that uh, I really don't like about the ZV-E10. Let's get it. Alright, so I think... To be fair, before I start firing off this stuff that I don't like about the camera, all of the all of the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, that don't matter, yo. Everybody talk about, oh, the camera shoulda had this or the camera shoulda had that. Listen, it don't have it. So you crying over spilled milk. It's no way that we're going to get it because the camera is already finished. So we're going to focus on the things that are wrong with the camera that we know are in the camera and the things that we know are not in the camera, we ain't even going to talk about them. As a whole, I think this is a great overall package. It's hard to find cameras like the one Sony's offering that are just jam-packed with features. Even if some of the features are old, even if some of the tech is old, what other company is packing out features like Sony is? Really none. Now, with that being said, I think this has a very, very critical flaw, a really bad flaw, and that is stabilization and the rolling shutter. Those two things combined create a super problem. Now let's talk about the stabilization first. This camera does not have any type of mechanical stabilization. So that means it's all software driven. Unless you attach a lens that has built in OSS, all you're gonna get is what this camera gives you electronically. And even though you can stabilize it in post with Catalyst, yo, the stabilization in this camera, I'm gonna be honest, it is just not freaking good at all i mean you can watch the whole video for yourself i'm gonna link it right up there again but the stabilization is not good at all when you compound that with rolling shutter even just holding it handheld the jerkiness of your hand creates this like jello wavy effect and you combine that with poor stabilization then it makes you wonder like why would i even buy this camera if it is supposed to be a vlog camera and i can't freaking vlog with it because in my opinion, as a vlog camera, it is not a success. Now, all of the smart features and the flippy screen, all that stuff is great. The built-in microphone is great. But what good is that if the stabilization looks horrible? So the thing with it is because it is electronic, Sony can fix it or try to fix it via firmware update. Even though you can do Catalyst Browse, 99% of people buying this joint ain't getting it to use Catalyst Browse. 
they need to fix that as soon as possible. The other problem is the rolling shutter. Unfortunately, the rolling shutter cannot be fixed with firmware. Sony may be able to tweak it a little bit, but it's a limitation of the hardware itself. So when you combine those two things, the horrible rolling shutter performance, when even just the little tiny micro jerks from your hand holding the camera combined with the rolling shutter performance, this is not as it stands a uh, ideal vlogging camera, at least not for me. You can judge for yourself. Watch the stabilization test for yourself. You draw your own conclusions and it's up to you if you think it's good enough or not. But for me, for a vlogging camera, I wouldn't be able to use this. Um, and it's unfortunate because I really wanted this to be the camera that would allow me to not have to pull out my super expensive camera setups to make videos all the time. With that said, everything else about the camera, I'm pretty cool with. You know, the feature set is banging for the price. It's got a flippy screen. I mean, I wish it had Sony's new menu system, but again, they not putting that in the lower end cameras. I think it's packed full of features. I think the video does look good. I mean, the stabilization, don't get me wrong, it does help. It does help, but it doesn't help how we need it to help in most cases. You have to be super surgical and smooth with your movements for the stabilization to really help out. And most people ain't doing that. So I would say as like a overall content creation camera, yes, it's, a, it's, it's probably one of the best deals you can get for your money because it's got the crop sensor, because you can change lenses, you can grow with this camera. But as a vlog camera, I think Sony really has some work to do. And it's hard for me to recommend this to somebody for vlogging. If that's the only thing you want is vlogging, I cannot recommend this camera to you. But if you want an overall decently priced camera that's packed full of features that's not perfect, because remember, no camera is perfect, then I think this is a good camera of conversation and something that you should definitely check out. So anyways, let me know what y'all think down in the comments. I probably was all over the freaking place with this video, but I only got a short amount of time, and I hope I cover pretty much everything at least y'all want to talk about. Let me know down in the comments what y'all think about this camera. Are you copping one? Are you getting a ZV-1? Are you going to wait till Sony's next one comes out? Let me know what y'all think, and I'm going to be down there in the comments kicking it with y'all. So, I got to get over here. They're about to do King of the Ring. I got to get out of here. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Peace and chicken grease. I'm out of here. Terry Warfield. Peace.